get on we're getting on Facebook Live. We've got our conference call folks up and now we're getting on Facebook Live in Jesus' name and we'll get started. Um let me go to our Facebook Live on mine so that I can share in Jesus' name while we're waiting on um while we're waiting on folks to join in. I want you to know that we appreciate you all joining us on Friday morning. Wow, is that awesome? Praise the Lord. Let's see. So let me get this up. So I want to share on our pages as well as. Okay, I don't know why it's doing that on our pages as well as on other stuff. So make sure you share, Facebook folks. Make sure you share. Mm. All right, let's see. Okay. So I'm about to share. It's important to share. I mean, how easy can God make it? Good morning, Miss Tina. How easy is, is it that if God would make it for us to be able to share uh, 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 the word of God. God has made it so easy for us to go to church. He's made it easier for us to share the gospel. All we got to do is push a button. <laughs> We're in church. All we have to do is uh, push a button and share and other people can uh, join in. Uh, hey, Jennifer, Deborah, Laura, uh, Lorraine, Laura, glory to God. It's so blessed having you all join. Let's see. So I'm sharing mine now. And pray that you guys will share as well. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm thankful. I am thankful. What the devil meant for bad, God is turning around for our good. We're able to have great Bible studies here, right in while I'm sitting in my living room, or we sitting in our house, and and some of y'all still got your pajamas on and everything, and y'all in church. Ain't that something? I tell you, isn't this awesome? Isn't this awesome? <laughs> God is so good and faithful, and so. We're going to go ahead and 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 get into the word. And of course, we understand that we're on holy the Holy Spirit series. This is part. I believe this is part seven. Wow, part seven of the Holy Spirit series. Is it part seven? Yeah, part seven. Part seven of the Holy Spirit series. Oh wow, I'm enjoying myself. This has been a great study. Uh. uh it's just been wonderful. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you and we thank you for this wonderful and blessed day. The day that you have made, we're rejoicing and so glad in it. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come together and to get into your word. Oh, it's awesome. It's so good. It's so yummy. <laughs> thank you, Father, that we're growing up in you in the name of Jesus. And as we continue the series, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Live big on the inside of us. Perfect us. Grow us. Teach us. Guide us. Comfort us. Lead us. Thank you, Father, for the revelation knowledge that you're given. Thank you, Lord, for using me as your vessel to teach your people as I sit alongside of them and grow up in the things of God. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. So we're on the Holy Spirit series. We continue on the Holy Spirit series. And now we're still on the get the fruit of the Spirit. Of course, we know that the Holy Spirit within, there's two operations of the Holy Spirit uh, in uh, for us. It's the Holy Spirit upon and the Holy Spirit within. Of course, the Holy Spirit within is when he caused a rebirth and began to dwell on the inside of us. And he made us totally brand new and began to, uh, through the new birth, and, and began to dwell on the inside of us. And we understand that the Holy Spirit within is, uh, is, uh, uh, is to, uh, 
for character building to te- to 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 uh for our character for us to be right folks be good people I'm telling you, born again believers ought to be the best folks in the world. (laughs) We ought to be because we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And so we find the fruit of the Spirit is for character building, character building. And so now we talked about love, joy, and peace. We talked about those three fruits. And uh, I would admonish you to go back and, and listen to all those things. But now we're talking about the fruit of patience, the fruit of patience. Now we know that patience is a virtue. Patience is a virtue. There is a, a, a we should be the most patient people on the earth. What it says, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy. Let me read it. The fruit of the spirit in Galatians chapter five and verse twenty two through twenty three. Let's read the fruits. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Faithful, uh, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And so long suffering is another word for patience. It's amazing that it would call they will call it long suffering. <laughs> you know, patience or long suffering is like a cuss word in today's society. We live in an instant society. Every I want mine right now. Uh, uh, you know, drive to one window, give your order, go to the number two, get pick up your order. And you better not take long doing it. I mean, instant food, instant this, instant that. We even want our, our relationships to be instant. I want you to love me right now. I want you to marry me right now now i want you to i mean it's it, it, it uh uh we have to be uh uh, careful that we don't get caught up in this microwave society, this microwave uh, uh, way of doing things. Everything has to be right now because the things of God are not like that. The kingdom of God does not uh, uh, operate like that. And so, uh, uh, you know, I, I like the, the way that they use the word for patience, long suffering, you know, there are some cuss words in Christianity today <laughs> and, and they're the S words. Oh my goodness, pastor Leslie. No, you're not going to say no S word. Yes, I am. I'm going to say what the S word is. And, and it ain't supposed to be a cuss word for Christians, but it has become a cuss word. Suffering sacrifice, surrender, submission. Those S words have become cuss words, but those S words are very important for our Christian walk. We have to understand that the Bible says that love suffers long. What? Meaning long suffering. You're going to be put in positions because of your faith, because what you're believing God for, because of what you're doing for the cause of Christ. You're going to be put in positions and places that are not comfortable. That will cause you pain. That will cause you not to feel comfortable. And we have to be all right with that. And they got long suffering for patience. <laughs> Woo! We, 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 we. Have you ever been patient for something? And it was just painful. It was just, it was like you were suffering through it. <laughs> but patience is a virtue. And so we find in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12, we find here, That the Bible says uh, that they, I mean, that ye be not slowful. That's Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, 12. That ye be not slowful, but followers of them through faith and patience inherit the promises. What? So it said, look here, don't be, don't be uh, slowful followers, but followers that through Through faith and patience, inherit the promise. My husband told me this morning that he's got a message called uh, the the two power twins, faith and patience. These are two power twins. Did you know patience is a powerful? Patience, of course, if it being a virtue, it is powerful. Patience is supernatural. Patience is like lifting weights and making you stronger. So patience is a virtue that has to be developed. Patience is a virtue.
that has to be developed through faith and patience, through faith and patience. We find that, uh, 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 that, that, uh, uh, patience, I mean, the promises, the promises are not conditional, but they are positional. Ah, the promises are not conditional. In other words, all the promises of God are yea and amen. However, you got to be in the right position in order to get it. And pay faith and patience will put you in the right position to receive the promises of God. We might be wondering why the promises of God are not operating in your life. It's because you have uh, uh, you have uh, not been operating through faith and patience. Uh, let me say that again. The promises of God are not conditional. In other words, all the promises of God are yeah, yes and amen, yeah? But they are positional. You have to be in the right position in order to get them. <laughs> and patience will put you, faith and patience will put you in the right position. Mm. So let's, let's look at the definition. What is the definition of patience? The definition of patience. Patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without... They go that S word again. I don't understand why. Jesus. Why? But anyway, okay. Patience. Patience is the capacity to, to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. That's this here is a Webster's dictionary. This is a Webster's di dictionary definition. <laughs> so patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. So now let's let's look at that. Patience is not just waiting. It's not just the, 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 the position of waiting. Patience, but patience is waiting with the right attitude. Oh, my, 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 my. I'm going to say that again because some of y'all been waiting, but your attitude is jacked up. You're waiting and don't nobody want to be around you because you're mean as a rattlesnake. You, everybody know you're waiting. Everybody know you're waiting, your hair toe up, lay, lipstick drawn any kind of way, come in, falling in any kind of, everybody know you waiting. <laughs> but see, patience is not just waiting. Patience is waiting with the right attitude, the right attitude, allowing the Holy Spirit, let me listen to this, allowing the Holy Spirit to teach and groom you while you're waiting. So waiting is not just doing, you know, I'm, I'm I'm waiting for my change to come, but it's having the right attitude, allowing the Holy Spirit to teach you and groom you while you're waiting. So there's some things going on while you are waiting. There's some things happening. There's some changes happening. There's some positional uh, 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 changes. There's some things that are getting you ready. For your change. Ah, some of y'all want your change to come right now. You want that man to be there right now. You want that job position right now. Guess what? You ain't ready for it. You're not ready for it. None of those yet. Because patience has not had her perfect work. Prove what you're saying, Pastor Leslie. All right, I'll do that. James chapter one and verse two. It says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. In the, in the Greek, it goes out to say temptations, tests, and trials. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Ah, the trying of my faith worketh patience. And let, now when you see let, that means that there's an act of your will. There is something that you're going to have to allow to happen. This is where Holy Spirit comes in and he starts to groom you while you're in your patience state. I, I, I want to say that while you're in your patience state, you are a patient of the Holy Spirit. I just heard that. While you're in your patience, while you're walking in patience, you're a patient 
of the Holy Spirit. And you got to let patience have her perfect work. So you have to allow your, it's an act of your will. We already said that walking in the uh, fruit of the spirit is always an act of your will. You have to allow it. You have to let patience have her perfect work that you might be perfect and entire wanting nothing. So it's not just, see, when you're in patience, when you're watching, when you're a patient of the Holy Spirit, walking in patience, uh, you're not just sitting there looking for your change to come, but you're looking for your change to come. Uh, you ain't get that. See, you're not just sitting there looking for your change to come, that thing you're believing God for, just that, but you're looking for the change to happen on the inside of you, making you ready for that thing. Oh. It's not just what can I get? What can, can I get out of this? Can Lord, can I? What can can you get me out of this? Can you get me out of this, Lord? Can you get me out of this? It's Lord, what can I get out of this? So when I, I know I'm getting out of it, but what can I get out of this? So when I get out, that I am a better person, that I am a more strong and res, have more more resolved, that I, my faith is strengthened, that I come out more looking like him. Because when I come out, I'm going to come out smelling like a rose. Okay, so let's, let's go back. Verse 4. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So patience will cause you to get in a place that you don't lack anything. It will mature you. That you may be perfect and entire. Perfect that you may be. Patience is something else. Now, patience is, is a groomer. Patience causes you to allow the Holy Spirit to groom you. To mature you. To give you a resolve. Where you don't want anything. Wanting nothing. In other words, I am good. <laughs> now, it goes on. If any of you lack wisdom, it is amazing that he he couples wisdom with this patience. Uh, if any of you lack wisdom. So we need wisdom to get through patience. And we know Holy Spirit is wisdom. He is the word. The Holy Spirit is wisdom. He will give us wisdom on what to do, what to say, how to get through. If any of you act lack wisdom, let him ask God that give it to all men liberally and a braid of not and it shall be given to him but let him act in faith look here let him act in faith nothing wavering in other words don't be one foot in one foot out you got to be all in did you know patience when we allow the holy spirit to do his perfect work in us it'll cause us to have an all-in mentality do you see where here that waiting is not just waiting Doing nothing but waiting is allowing the Holy Spirit to groom us. It's allowing the Holy Spirit to teach us. It's allowing the Holy Spirit to perfect us. But let him act in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like the wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. With the wind and, 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 and let him and let not that man think. That he shall receive anything of the Lord. Meaning a, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Patience will cause you not to be kooky. Not to have a double mind. So patience is not just waiting. But not having the right attitude while you're waiting. Allowing the Holy Spirit to groom you. To perfect you. To strengthen you. To shore you up. Patience is like lifting weights. You're lifting the weights, lifting weights with patience. It'll strengthen you. And so we find that patience is not just sitting, doing nothing. Some of y'all saying you're having patience. You're having patience. I'm in patience. I'm doing patience. I'm patience. You're, you're, you're patient, but you're not a patient. Of the Holy Spirit. That's the whole thing. You're not a patient of the Holy Spirit. You're patient. You're, you're having patience. But you're not a patient. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> 
The Bible says uh, in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. That, uh, uh, let me read it. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. It says, let us not be weary in well-doing. See, we have to understand that patience is it has a reward. Patience has a uh, 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 it, it has great reward. And so, let us not be will, wary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In due season, uh, your due season is coming if you have patience. If you do it as the Holy Spirit would say. Uh, 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 let us not be will wear, weary and well doing. Let me say this. There's a lot of weary soldiers out there right now. The lot has come upon the earth. A lot has come upon the earth. And there's a lot of weary people out there. And they are loosening, loosening, they're loosening their grip. They're falling away from God. Their relationships are, they're not committed to the house of God, not committed to the Lord. You can't say you committed to God and you, and you are, 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 ain't committed to the house of God, the plan of God, the house of God, the plan of God is, is, uh, that goes together. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can't separate that out. No, sir. And there's a lot of people that's losing, that they are getting wary in well doing. They're getting weary in doing good. They're getting weary in doing what's right. They're they they they're getting weary. He said, "Don't don't get weary in well doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not." Let's read that in the Amplified. Let us not grow weary and become discouraged in doing good. Oh, I got a message called "Doing Good." Ooh wee, it's a good message. One of these days I I'll, I'll, I'll preach it to y'all, but. Let us not grow weary and or become discouraged in doing good. There's a power in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap if we do not give in. If we do not give in. Don't give in. Don't give up. Amplified Classic Edition. And let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time and at the right appointed time, season, we shall reap if we do not loosen, loosen and relax our courage and faint. Don't loosen and relax. Hold on, baby. Hold on. So let, let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, this is a message. Let us not get f fatigued. Let not. Okay, let me start all over. Uh, this is the message. Let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, our harvest, at the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. Ah, how many of y'all got a good harvest out there? You know, it takes patience in order to allow that harvest to grow and to uh, and to be ready to be harvested some of you are trying to harvest up your blessing before the time it takes patience allow the holy spirit to do his perfect work in us the passion translation the passing translation says this and don't allow yourselves to be weary in planting good seeds ah Ooh, we done plant a lot of good seeds. Oh, my, 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 my. We done plant a lot of good seeds. And I tell you, I'm so thankful to be able to plant those good seeds. A lot of you out there are part of the good seeds that we have planted. And I'm thankful. Ooh, we don't allow yourselves to be weary in planting good seeds. For the season of reaping the wonderful harvest you've planted is coming. Let me tell you something. Harvest time is coming. Harvest time is coming. But if you uproot yourself, if you stop, if you give in, if you relax your grip, if you go on and, and, and give up, you won't be there for the harvest. You won't be there for the harvest. Patience. Patience. Stay patient. You can't tell me that you serve God all these years and God ain't gave you no blessings. You can't say that. 
But you can't tell me that you served God all these years and you've done good all these years and you ain't getting nothing out of it. Oh, baby, your harvest is coming. Your harvest is coming. As a matter of fact, some of you that received the harvest and didn't even know it because you wasn't even, I mean, you didn't recognize. You need to recognize. Wow. That's wow. Right. That was 10 minutes. And so here, uh, uh, let's say, see how. In the last few minutes that we have, which I have about three minutes. So the last few minutes, we're going to see how do you wait? How do you wait? Well, Isaiah 40, verse 31. Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's a good preacher. They shall run and not get weary. I tell you, wait on the Lord, they say. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew them. Notice that those are all motions. Those are all active motions. You don't see nobody sitting here. Nobody doing nothing here. Let me tell you something. If you're waiting on God, then you should be active. Now, wait there means like waiting like a, 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 a waiter waits on a table. Serving. So they that Wait on the Lord. You're waiting for your change to come, but you're still serving God. So if you're waiting on God, you need to be serving God. You need to be having a lifestyle of praise and worship. You need to be meditating and fellowshipping in his word in prayer. And so waiting is active motion. You're saying you're waiting on God, but you're not, you, you don't have no praise while life. You don't have no prayer life. You're not meditating in the word. You're not fellowshipping with him. You're not serving God. Let me say that again. Underscore serving God. Now, let me say this. With this pandemic thing going on and all this stuff going on, you're finding out that people have stopped serving God. They stopped serving God. You're not waiting on God. And so you find that your strength is waning. You find that you, you, you feel like you're in a rut. You feel like you're because you're not serving God. It says, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. This is how you wait patiently. You wait patiently by serving God, doing something for the Lord, something for the house of God. You're doing something for God, serving God. You got you to gotta get up. Hey, we only got church once a month, once in a huge building where you spaced out. Go, come, come, get up. Get out the cave. You, we, you get in the corner at the house of God. But you need to be serving God some kind of way. You need to be consistent to the house of God. Praising and worshiping God. Fellowshipping with God. Uh, meditating on the scriptures. Uh, 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 supporting the house of God. Supporting the house of God. Some folks even stop supporting the house of God. How are you going to support? And you're talking about you waiting on the Lord. When you're not waiting on God and you wonder why your strength is waning. Why stuff seems so dry? Why stuff is because you stop waiting on God. Waiting on God is active motion. They that wait on the God on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Those are active motions. So don't tell me you're waiting on God for anything and I don't see these attributes in your waiting. You're not waiting on God? No, sir. You don't have a praise life. You don't have a prayer life. You don't meditate the scriptures. You're not doing anything for the house of God, serving, serving God in his house. You're not supporting the house of God. You're not waiting on God. No, sir. And so we find that waiting is a choice. Patience is a choice. Patience is a virtue. It's a choice that we have to allow. And so while we wait, while we're in patience, while we're a patient of the Holy Spirit, patiently waiting, we're allowing him to, we have the right attitude, allowing the Holy Spirit to teach and to groom us. All active motions, all active, 
all active. Oh, I'm waiting to get this here new job position. Well, are you waiting to get the new job position? So what are you doing I, while you're waiting on the new job position? Have you been serving God, supporting the ministry? Have you been uh, praising and worshiping God, meditating the scriptures? Have you been fellowshipping with God? Do you have prayer life? Have, have, I, I, what, what are you doing? Are, are you doing the right thing? Doing good? Are you, are you, are you doing good on the job? Are, Oh, you're, are you doing good on the job? Doing, the Bible says don't get weary in well-doing. Are you doing good on the job? Are, are you doing good to people? Are, are you, uh, hey, if you're waiting, you, 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 you need to be doing, we ought to see, uh, 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 we ought to see evidence of your waiting. See, we want God to do something for us. We, we saying we waiting on God. I want you to do this for me. I want you to do this for me. I want you to do this for me. What are you doing for him? Ah! I know you don't think you playing God. I know you don't think you playing him. You know what I mean? Playing him. Playing God. Yeah, I'm waiting on God. You, what, 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 you want him to do all this miraculous stuff for him. What are you doing? I mean, you want him to do all this miraculous stuff for you? What are you doing for him? I like what Pastor said. He said, shoot, if we looked at some folks' uh, treasures in heaven, you, you know you're building treasures in heaven. The Bible tells us that we're building treasures in heaven. You, we, if we look at some folks' treasures, checks, chests, all you got is moth and rust. You open it up, ain't nothing in it. Uh, okay, anyway. But... <laughs> Patience is a virtue. Patience will cause you to be able to weather through the storms of life. It'll cause you to endure and, and be strong. And when you come through the storm, when you come through the trials of life, when you come through uh, the the things that are coming up against you, you'll be a better person. It says, count it all joy. Oh, that's the that means have the right attitude. Count it all joy. Check it up as joy. Oh, you gonna come up against me? Joy. Oh, this is happening to me. Joy, because I know that the trying of my faith is working patience. I'm gonna win this thing. Yes, I am. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna win this. Yes, sir. I'm gonna come out of this. But when I come out, I'm going to be better. I'm going to be uh, have more resolve. I'm going to be stronger. I'm going to be like like uh, Marvin Sapp said. Uh, 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 what's that song he sang? Uh, now, there I go. I'm doing a pastor. Uh, what, <laughs> well, you know, he says, I'm better, much better. He said, he said, oh, I done went through. But baby, I came out better. And so patience will fix you up and make you a better person. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you and we thank you for the virtue, the fruit of patience, which is a virtue. We thank you, Father, that uh, we are, we yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit. We yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit, having the right attitude, Having the right attitude, we allow the Holy Spirit to groom us, to perfect us, that we may grow and be mature and come out a better person. Lord, we, we serve you. We support the house of God. We praise and worship you. We meditate the scriptures. We do good. We fellowship with you. We pray. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be patient, patiently waiting for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you'd like to listen to this message again on our conference call, just dial 605-313-5089. 605-313-5089. Put in your code 624-634. This is reference number 
418. And we want to make sure that we keep our brothers and sisters in our prayers uh, that are on the, uh, on the uh, coastline and also on the East Coast uh, after Ida has done some horrific things. The families that lost loved ones and, and people that have lost property, uh, both in uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, and also on the East Coast in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York. We want to pray for all those people in the name of Jesus and uh, uh, and offer our support. Uh, New Beginnings will be doing something. We'll let you all know what we'll be doing to help our uh, help in, in assisting these wonderful people as they recover from the storm in the name of Jesus. Also, remember that September the 19th, September the 19th, God has blessed us that we're going to have an in-person service. In-person service on September the 19th. At 12 o'clock at the Wahhabi building, huge building on I-50, off of I-55 uh, uh, at 12 noon. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. Make sure that you come. Bring your children. If you want to bring your children up in the things of God, make sure they come to the house of God in Jesus' name. So you want to make sure in the name of Jesus that you all are there in Jesus' name. And this look like the subject that pastor is going to be talking about. One of my favorites is generosity. I know all y'all generous. Y'all some generous people. Y'all some good people. We love y'all. And so you want to be a part of that. That's, a, that's at 12 noon on September the 19th. We'll be having our in-person service. And of course, you can always watch us on Facebook Live. Facebook Live. We'll always have Facebook Live. And uh, this Sunday, We'll have Facebook Live at 10 o'clock a.m. 10 o'clock a.m. My God, how easy is that to be able to go to church? Just, <laughs> just cut the thing on and go to church and get the word. This is awesome. This is wonderful. How can we be slowful in that? Make sure that you all join us uh, this Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. And tell some friends to join us as well. Uh, go ahead and share this message with some folks in the name of Jesus. Because patience is a virtue. It is supernatural in Jesus' name. Love you all. Have a wonderful and blessed day.